Welcome to Third Wheel Podcast. At night. I'm Darcy. <laughs> and I'm Caleb. <laughs> and we're going to be touching along kind of what we were going over in the previous episode with this marriage Facebook group and mm-hmm. advice. Yeah. So forgive me last episode. I'm very slow. So I was like, can I see your phone? And I did <laughs> go again sentence by sentence. But I think it worked she, well. Yeah. As she narrates... And, you know, gives us the audible version. I'll go back and give you the special ed treatment and break it down <laughs> sentence by sentence. What? I'm just being open and real. Why are you special laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm being open. <laughs> being honest with our audience here. I'm a little bit slower than everybody else. So just as like a quick recap, in case it's anyone's first time listening, I'm very happily married. But I noticed that there was a marriage Facebook group for advice. And I was like, that could be nice, you know, like... You can post anonymously or just kind of relate with other people that have a similar circumstance because I myself don't have a lot of people that share a similar life or story, what have you. And um, And is this group helping you achieve that goal? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Now, would you say these people have it worse off than you did? Or is it, do you feel empowered by reading how bad lives are? Yeah. People's lives are Oh, for sure. Yeah, and you feel, like, better about yourself? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, in a way, it's still kind of therapeutic, you know? It's not, like, the worst (laughs) thing ever. So, you know, it's not that you feel like you're better than them or anything, but... I do. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But, like, I don't know. There's something therapeutic about... Like, I I know I have confidence issues, but reading that one last, that last time, last episode, (laughs) where she's, like, making up excuses to be like, oh, no, he, he's definitely not married to someone else. He's just gone, you know, for a month at a time, you know? (laughs) And hasn't told anybody for three years. Yeah. Like, I just, oh, my goodness. I'm glad, personally, that I have a little bit more confidence in myself, you know, to where if she's gone for a week, she's clearly married to somebody else. (laughs) There's no other explanation. <laughs> there's nothing the military else. doesn't exist. Yeah, there's nothing else it could possibly be. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I just, you know. All right, Darcy, what's on the agenda for today? What kind of crazy stories are we going to hear about oh, this week? All right. Well, I say week. This probably came out a month ago. Let's see. <laughs> Let, let's, let's do this one. This one's very interesting now. Is I, it longer? Yes. Maybe, can you... Is there any way you think possibly so I have to keep snatching it and rereading it? Can you like say, okay, it's a good place to stop and discuss? Is there any way you think you could kind of do that in your head, or do you I, think it I needs feel to like be it read works? Through? I feel like it works better being read through and then being broken down. Okay, well let's do that then. Yeah, Watch. I feel like it worked really well last time. I just feel bad having to reread it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just it's in my head, but I like trying to not be repetitive. Yeah, no, I think I think reading it as a whole, because if you just like continue breaking it down, it might get a little confusing as to what the whole thing says. Yeah, that's fair. So, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I am very empathetic with this woman's situation. I will say her post itself isn't funny. Like it's it's actually pretty sad, but the comments are what really really got it for me. Yeah, and I was appalled at the way people responded to this so and the comments are funny you're saying yeah yeah okay so you know like not making a joke at joke at this lady's poor situation but just want to preface with that yeah that's fair fair distinction disclaimer yeah Oh, other disclaimer um is this a very gross one yeah okay all right so we're going to be talking about mature subjects i wouldn't recommend putting this on in the background with your children or younger siblings um, if you're kind of curious about like, oh, is this going to be offensive? It might be a little bit because sometimes we touch on mature themes. Sometimes people are very open about their uh, intimacy life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, just fair warning, this isn't going to be the happy-go-lucky podcast like our main channel is. So, mm. all right, with that out the way, warning, you know, not safe for work. <laughs> all right, okay. continue. So she goes on to say, my husband and I are in different worlds right now. Our six-year anniversary is in a few weeks, and he would like to start working on having our third child. Third we child. We have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and I feel like my hands are full, and yet he feels like a third would be a nice addition. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I enjoy taking care of my children. But the idea of being pregnant again isn't what I want right now. Sex isn't the best for us right now. TMI here, sorry, but condoms have been our birth control since my youngest was born because I'm still breastfeeding him, and two nights ago while we were having sex, he took the condom off without asking. 
We had ourselves a bit of an argument in bed, and it was the first time where we didn't hold each other while falling asleep. And last night, we didn't have sex at all. (laughs) I have always loved having sex with my husband, even on the nights where I was tired, but these last two nights have been our worst. On another note, sorry again, I was essayed when I was 14, and he knows that. What he tried to do a couple nights ago brought me back some bad memories from 17 years ago. I'm not happy at all with what my husband tried to do. Mm. I don't even know what to do. It feels like everything is slowly unraveling. Yeah. Okay, so a quick S-aid sexually assaulted, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I did that to try to censor it. That's cool. Because she used the R word and some people, it triggers them. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. That's mm-hmm. actually very good. Okay. <sighs> Six year anniversary did that so four and a two okay so they actually did a couple years where they were just married first mm-hmm. that's my preference whenever yeah. I get married is like I prefer not to have kids right away I've preached many times in our first three episodes with me and Darcy on the main channel we talked about um, my goals for a relationship we talked about slowing down um, not going out full swinging with the physical intimacy stuff we talked about not being sexual or physical right out the gate and then that kind of gets you like a clearer mind. Going mm-hmm. into a relationship, yeah. you're, you're actually more focused on compatibility, potential issues that you have that the other person has. I've always encouraged people to slow down. Easier yeah. said than done. I understand, especially if you drinks are involved or right. anything else. If you're, yeah, but it sounds like they were married, you know, a yeah. year and a half before sounds, she even got pregnant. It sounds like they kind of did it right, and yeah. she was saying they were they were doing very well. Mm-hmm. They had a four year old, a two year old. Seems like they have a consistent two year gap. Married mm-hmm. two years, kid, two years, kid two years he wants a third one yeah it it seems to be a very consistent like i mean it sounds like communication's been good it sounds like they've slowed down you know they enjoyed each other being married she doesn't say i don't she's not talking about regretting having kids right now she says she loves her kids very much yeah and but so okay she says her hands are full Mm. okay so two toddlers where do you stand on the um discussion of a mom being a full-time job. Oh, God, it is. Yeah. I mean, um, there's... I think there was a study done on it about the average amount of hours worked in a week for a stay-at-home mom, and it was like 100 hours. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. So you got comedians like Bill Burr who will say, like, you know, oh, you know, he'll make fun of Oprah for saying being a mom's a full-time job. And he'll be mm. like, you know, he's actually out working while mom's at home he's like how hard is it to turn on the tv and then leave the kid to watch tv you know what i mean well because it's not as simple as turning on the tv and the kid watches tv yeah yeah. (laughs) now um, i mean you see a shy the mm. i mean she's what four or five and like she's a well-behaved kid she listens well she's easy to entertain but even then like your hands can get pretty full with her like you know well yeah my thinking is like um so i i really wanted kids when i was like 18 before I knew anything, started dating. Well, my parents had another kid. Now she's six. And when I was taking care of her, it was like such a handful. And I'm not, I'm not even doing it full time. It's just like the couple hours that I'm watching her. My mom's got her on a routine uh, for feeding, for sleeping, for how long she's awake Mm -hmm. and all these things. Like she's got her on like this and like, it's a, it's a hassle. Yeah. Okay. So, and aside from just the kid itself, it's like, you got laundry, you got cleaning Mm -hmm. the house, you got cooking. If you're not, if you, if you wait too long to change their diaper, they get a rash. You got to treat the rash and then you got to be on top of changing their Mm -hmm. diaper. It's a full. You got to figure out why they're crying for two hours because they're not telling you why. You got to, you know. I know people that are moms and they're complaining on Facebook because this mom I know, she was complaining. I I don't like how she worded it on Facebook, but I can empathize, empathize empathize with her just a bit because she's like, you know, again, the, the way she worded it, she's like, why does my husband or... I don't think they're legally married, but you know, whatever. She's like, why, why does the, why does my baby daddy think he can come home and just go to sleep? I get tired too. I understand he works 40 hour weeks or I understand he's working full time, but you know, I want to sleep too. Why does he feel entitled to, I was like, I didn't like the way she worded it, but that's her common thing where she's mm-hmm. busting take, I think she's got a couple kids, like three. So she's taking yeah. care of three kids. They're all in different wavelengths. They're all different ages. Some of them are probably still breastfeeding. The others are probably feeding themselves. And it's a whole thing. 
you know, I understand she's probably tired all the time. Mm -hmm. There's another person I know who she wants to go out more. She wants to do all these things, but she's got all these kids she has to take care of. And her husband's a little bit more absent and he's not really doing anything. And he's sitting around playing video games while she's kind of doing all the work. I thought it would be so unacceptable to me. Yeah. And I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I don't necessarily agree with the first person I mentioned. I don't agree with her attitude where like, you right. know, he, he's working full time. He needs to come home and be a dad full time. Like, yes, but also like, right. you know, he's working. He's not like doing nothing. Right. That'd be one thing. But anyway, that that's where I stand on that. Like, it is more of a job than like some comedians would, you know, like to acknowledge. Mm. Especially um, when you got multiple. Yeah. Just so, one's hard. <laughs> so on her end, the one who's burying the kids, that's another thing that people don't really think about. Like, it takes a toll on you to have so many kids. To be pregnant. Yeah, to be pregnant, to give birth, right. the after effects. Right. Like, your body is like, I mean, would you use the word destroyed? <laughs> um, you know what I mean? I, well, it's like, because you have all these hormones, you're exhausted, you're hurting, you're, you know, and like, I don't know. I just, I know how tired I am now mm-hmm. and I work part time, yeah. you know, and I'm exhausted most of the time to yeah. where I don't feel like cooking dinner. I don't mm-hmm. do all this stuff. But if I were to have a kid, that wouldn't be an option. Right. And then to have two of them and be pregnant while yeah. trying to do all that. Like yeah. there's no way. Yeah. So that first part, the, just to, all that to say, I can kind of emphasize, empathize why she's like, you know, two, I'm good. And I don't even think she's saying like, no, just not right now. Yeah, just yeah. not right this second. She's like, I just feel like my hands are full. Yet he feels like a third would be nice, would be a nice addition. Mm-hmm. So in his mind, he's like, oh, why not just add one more to it? Right. You know, so I can understand her Like you're already doing two, what's three to you? Yeah, what's three? Yeah. You know. Which um, I have heard the jump from one to two is hard, but two to three is pretty like same, same. Sure. So she goes on to say, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I enjoy taking care of my kids, so she's not regretting the kids part. Mm -hmm. The idea of being pregnant again isn't what I want right now. So she even says right now, she's not even saying, again, I wasn't there for the pillow talk after the fact. I wasn't there there for the full (laughs) discussion. I'm just going off how she worded it. She sounds reasonable. Okay. Yeah, very reasonable. Okay, so this is a, okay, next paragraph. Sorry, guys, but this is, she's being open here. And it's anonymous member, right? So it's not even... I can't call her Stephanie. You know what I mean? Me could, but her name's probably not Stephanie. Her name's Anon. (laughs) Anon goes on to say... (laughs) Nani. Sex isn't the best for us right now. TMI here, sorry. But condoms have been our birth control since my youngest was born. So they've been safe. They're trying to, you know, slow down. Yeah, just slow down on things. Because I'm still breastfeeding him in two nights. Oh, she's talking about the kid. Wait, (laughs) let's pause there. Okay. Four and a Mm two-year-old. She's I, she's still breastfeeding a two year old. I've thought about that when you read it initially, <laughs> but I was like, maybe is I he still? Well, is is she like pumping and giving him the bottle, or is he still like? Is he just nibbling off the teat still? You know, right. like that's a little weird to me. A little bit. Too, I agree, but two maybe there's a little bit of justification. I don't know. When's the cutoff? Do you know off the top of your head? I, I've heard it's really healthy. Like the longer you can do it, the better. You know, but like, like I said, like I. Two's kind of pushing it. Two's <laughs> pushing it if he's still like drinking from the tap per se. Just... <laughs> if he's still drinking from the faucet. <laughs> Directly from the cow. Yeah. <laughs> we need a move button. <laughs> move. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, a, if she's like, if she, <laughs> if she's like pumping or something and yeah. giving him like a glass, like, right. then I'm like, yeah, you know, like sure. the longer you can do it, the better. Like, it's it's really good for your immune system, things like that. I'm very, very, very pro breastfeeding as long as you possibly can. And but some, and some people can't, and that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, right. That's uh, different. It trips me out. Some people who are will get onto a woman for not breastfeeding when she literally cannot. Yeah, and they're they're sitting there like, oh my gosh, wow. Right. Wow, you're a terrible mom. <laughs> okay, they're, they're, those people exist and it drives me crazy. Okay. <laughs> you okay? Was that, was that a good drink that you just had? <laughs> We're keeping that in. <laughs> Don't spit it out. That's my soundboard. <laughs> God dang it, swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I didn't expect it to make the noise at the end like that. I don't know why. Every drink ever does that, Darcy. Throw a I straw. understand, but. <laughs> We, and then you kept making me laugh. We got the straw so it wouldn't do that, and you legit just still made it happen. <laughs> I'm proud of you. All right. Okay, actually, though, while we're evaluating this, this part kind of bugs me. Because maybe she worded it wrong, but she said... Oh, no, since my youngest was born, because I'm still breastfeeding him. Okay, never mind. She did break it up. I was going to say, I am still breastfeeding him, and two nights ago, well, while we were having sex, I thought she was about her husband. <laughs> But, okay, I'm better now. I fixed it. Okay. Two nights ago, while we are having sex, he took the condom off without asking. How, that. How, did, how do you feel about that? In any case scenario, I would consider that assault. Even legally. Why? Legally. Whenever I was reporting my assault case, they were saying that if you request protection and they take it off in the middle without like trying to be sneaky and not letting you know and not asking for consent that that is considered a form of legal assault. Okay. All right. Well, if it's mm -hmm. a legal definition, I can't argue with you. Yep. So anyway, we had ourselves a bit of an argument in bed. It was the first time we didn't hold each other while falling asleep. I don't believe you. <laughs> if they've been married for, what would they say, six years? I promise you there's been a plenty of times I didn't hold each other. <laughs> What do you think? Am I wrong? Is it lovey-dovey the rest of your life? Uh, I mean, I'm only two years in, so I don't know. But, I mean, like, I don't, I don't think she means in a literal sense. But, like, the fact that they gave each other, like, the cold shoulder overnight, maybe. Right. Okay. It's kind of the the thing I'm picking up from it. Yeah. I want to, so, okay. I, I was listening to you earlier, given the definition of, you know, it's a form of sexual assault, I guess, if you don't, mm -hmm. if you, okay. I didn't know that, but that's good to know. Yeah. But I, w I wouldn't be, I would never be like sneaky like that anyway. Right, I would right. never be like, you know, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> getting a kid no matter what. <laughs> like the guy with the buttons on the side of his pants when he just like rips them off in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Can you, not, this could be a really bad question. Can you not feel the difference? If you, you can, that's probably why they argued in bed. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, he was like, ha, ah, she won't notice. And right. She felt like she, she knew immediately. Yeah. <laughs> all right, first time we didn't hold each other falling asleep. Last night we didn't have sex at all. I've always loved having sex with my husband, even on the nights where I was tired. These last two nights have been our worst. Okay, this is pretty recent. You know, I give her some credit. Anon, I give you some credit for... Nani. Yeah, Anani. Anon Anani. <laughs> Um, I give you credit for trying to get some help here. Pretty quick, too. Yeah, I mean, it feels... She didn't, like, let this boil for three years. Does she not have any friends? Another wife she can talk to? Nothing like that? Well, she probably doesn't... Even if she does, she probably doesn't want to. I mean, she posted anonymously in this right. group, so that means she doesn't want people to, you know, either give her husband crap or her or what have you. Like, she wants it to be a private matter, but wants to be able to get help for it. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm actually kind of giving her credit. Like, she's being very discreet. A lot of people in these situations are like, my husband so-and-so, and, -so, and mm -hmm. it's like she she puts her name in there, you know? Tags him so it shows up on his page, too. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> on another note, sorry again, she says, I was SA'd when I was 14, and he knows that. What he tried to do a couple nights ago brought back some bad memories from 17 years ago. I am not happy at all, she screams in all caps, <laughs> with what my husband tried to do. I don't know what to do. It feels like everything is slowly unraveling. Anani, I've never been in your situation before, but I this isn't one of those instances where I feel like you're blowing things out of proportion. I don't feel like you're exaggerating. I don't think you have your expectations too high. Yeah. Although this group, is this the group she posted in where... <laughs> where it says wives lower your yeah. expectations. <laughs> yeah, is this it? Or is it the other one? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's this one. Okay. Well, I feel... Maybe this was the wrong page to put it on. <laughs> I encourage women in this situation to reach out to a friend. When you open up to such a giant group like this, you're going to get the really mean comments too. Mm. It's not always going to be the sweet right. the sweet people. You know what I mean? You're going to get the people that... Or they give you bad advice. Like that mm -hmm. one lady we read the other day where she was like, your husband's addicted to porn. Have you tried ignoring it? Yeah. Have you tried playing a board game? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you keep bringing it up, yeah. you're putting it back in his head. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to relapse again. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, Anani, I very much empath- empathize. Why can't I empathize. say that? Empathize. It's not. <laughs> it's. I keep saying that. I don't know why. I'm it's it. not empathize. You're not yeah. sizing up empath. I don't know what episode we're on, Darcy, Empa. but my, our audience should know. I'm kind of a dummy <laughs> by now. And you know, they they hear me on the main channel with Shaps. And maybe they, they maybe dumb is the wrong descriptor. <laughs> Maybe stupid is the wrong word to yeah. use. Maybe the word is what 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 word did I use last episode? Me, an original thought. What what word did I use? I forget. <laughs> Whatever. All right. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I empathize with you. There you go. When you put emphasis on the th- that actually really helped. <laughs> I do. I don't, I don't think you're in the wrong here for having these feelings, honestly. And even the last one we read last time, I don't feel like y'all are in the wrong. Y'all have your expectations or right. y'all are like blowing things out of proportion. I don't feel that way. Yeah. I, I'm really sorry for you. Yeah. Um, and it totally makes sense for it to bring her back to that moment of assault, too, because that's such a like... Traumatic experience. It's a traumatic experience. And for someone to just like not get your consent on somebody, somebody that you're supposed to be able to trust and have your most vulnerable moments with, and they just completely disregard your feelings and they're like, well, I want it to happen. So it's too bad. Like that's very much like, you know, you, you can still get assaulted in marriage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like no is no. Sure. And yeah. Yeah. well, I mean, the when we first read that part, and you were like, "Oh no, that's definitely a form of assault." Like, you know, the 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 passion, the emotion coming out of you while you were t- saying that, I was like, "Oh dang!" Like, there, this is really serious. This is more serious than I would have thought. Mm. You know, kind of. Um, I mean, you have to think about it. Like, I mean, if somebody's telling you no to something, like that's a no. Yeah. No, I, th- that I understand. Right. I've never had that issue, and I've been in that position where I've said no, and the person keeps pushing and keeps. Yeah crossing boundaries right. I, i've never... and even though you're already performing the act of sex like there's so much stuff in in yeah. sex like you know like um i don't know it's just if you're saying no to any part of it and they're forcing it on you like right. that is assaultive yeah i mean i've kind of had mixed feelings you know this could be the ignorant guy okay the the, the this could be me reaching past what i should be allowed to talk about but i've always been finicky about the five yeses and then a no and then five more yeses Mm -hmm. you know a no sandwiched in between five or ten yeses i've always been the guy that's like bro like come on you know but in this instance this does feel like a a, it was a consistent no yeah it feels like a valid violation right they talked about it before i mean imagine if you were with your wife yeah and she wanted to have a baby and you're like i'm I'm not ready right now yeah and you found out she poked holes in your car no yeah i mean it's same same hmm I'd be very angry. Yeah. I definitely would feel violated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's a good way to if, put it. If that kind of helps you think from a guy's perspective of how violated mm. that would feel. Yeah. I definitely um, can empathize with this. There with you the go. Nani. Yeah. See, that th- I'm, I'm telling you, that breakdown of the th- really helped out. <laughs> <laughs> when you dumb it down for guys like me, it actually gets pretty good. Okay. So let's right. get through these comments. Let's go one at a time. Try to go slow for me. <laughs> Well, this one's a long one. Okay. I guess we're doing it like we just did the post. So. Should I should I pull up the actual post so that you can read the response? The responses to that comment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's hear it, Darcy. I'm ready. All right. So this guy responds to this, tra- like, honestly tragic instance. Yeah. As I was it's reading it, expecting to laugh, I was sitting like, oh, God. <laughs> It's okay, Anani. Like, <laughs> like I, cry. like I said, her post wasn't yeah. funny. You know, yeah, it was actually we, quite sad. I'm glad we established that at the beginning. Yeah. So then, <laughs> this person's response is: since this is a Christian marriage group that, in theory at least, follows the Bible, Ephesians five, First Peter three, <laughs> Colossians three, I'll give us the answer to these questions at hand. Is this an admin by chance? No. Okay. So just random person yeah. saying, oh, well, since this is a Christian group. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If wives are to submit to their husbands, which is clearly what the Bible instructs, then third child it is if that's what he wants. <laughs> he is to be loving and considerate of the family God has given him to lead. It sounds like he's listened to his wife, heard her, and disagreed with what he, she told him. My take is certain to offend modern sensibilities for some commenting here, but the biblical instruction is quite simple. He's not asking her to sin. 
In wanting another child, he is asking her to continue to carry out God's instruction to be fruitful and multiply. I hate that. Oh, yeah. Then we have God's thoughts on children as a blessing. Behold, children are an inheritance from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Oh, no. (laughs) He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Psalms 127, 3 through 5. Wait, hold on. So that verse, was he saying his wife's an enemy in a sense? Is that what he's saying? (laughs) I don't know. We'll break it down in a second. Yeah. So if he wants a third child and she won't go along with him, she's in the wrong here and she is withholding part of God's blessing upon his family. Well, I'm convinced. I don't know how you feel. (laughs) Should I read the person's response to his comment? Is this a nanny or some other person? Other person. Yeah, go ahead. Said, I agree with you that if he wants another child, she should submit to him. But he shouldn't be deceitful towards his wife and take the condom off. He needs to stare down and discuss the fact that he wants another child, if that's even what's going on. For all we know, he just wanted the feeling of sex without a condom and didn't care about the consequences. And the guy who initially po- uh, responded or commented and didn't address the condom aspect of this. If she is to submit to him in all things per Ephesians 5 and 1 Peter 3, then how is submitting to his desire for pro- prophylactical sex any different than submitting to his desires for a larger family? The issue would be in his approach to it all. He does not need to be secretive about how he goes about what he decides. He should confident and assured enough to be upfront about what he needs and wants what she would benefit from is an older woman who could teach her how to love her husband god's oh, words man. not mine <laughs> per titus 2 oh no it's like, not titus 2 come on the per- <laughs> <laughs> we're reaching now <laughs> this other person said i mean if he wants sex without a condom for whatever reason he needs to talk about it not deceive her deception is not in the playbook for godly husband I was going to say, so like him being sneaky like that pissed her off to the point now where, whereas they had a healthy sex life and they're enjoying it every day. She's okay. She's having fun even when she's tired. And now it's gone from that to like, now they're not doing it at all. And this person replied to the first comment saying, yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Glad to see someone speaking out his word. Oh my God. (laughs) All right, Anani, I I apologize. I feel like you're in the wrong group here. (laughs) Yeah, maybe we should, uh, once I finish editing this part or this episode we should just post it in the chat in response and be like our biblical discussion breakdown of this <laughs> post and then it's totally like just crapping on everybody in yeah. it yeah all right so this person responds to anani david so it's a old guy an old white guy who probably hopefully doesn't do this to his wife that often but it just goes since this is a christian marriage group that in theory, at least, so he's already prefacing this with like, you know, in theory, this is, you know, a, a, a chat and a group that lines up with what I'm about to lay at your feet, you know. He's, he lays out these three verses here. Did you read the verses out in the response? I can't remember. He read one from Psalms, but not those specific verses. Well, that's good then, because then this would have been way longer than it mm-hmm. already is. So, <sighs> if wives are submit to their husbands which is clear what the Bible instructs, the third child, it is, if that's what he wants. I'm already I'm already <clears throat> angry for it, yeah. Like, you know, well, if he wants it, then you're in the wrong for yeah. being upset. I bet you David never had to once even take care of the kid, his kids. I, I bet <laughs> you he's the type of husband where if the wife was going out, he called it babysitting mm-hmm. to, like, watch the kids while she went out for, like, a single night. Yeah, not, you know, not parenting right (laughs) he's like oh i'm babysitting the kids tonight yeah i I guarantee you that's the type of person he is yeah he is to be loving and considerate of the family god has given him to lead okay well what what we just read previous to this comment is not loving and considerate to the family right you know what i mean he's not leading it sounds like he'd listened to his wife heard her and disagreed so him uh essaying her in a certain way her him assaulting her is um, listening and disagreeing. Okay. Yeah. Let's chalk it up to right. You know, if he's addicted to porn, play a board game. If he <laughs> if he did something without telling you and was sneaky about it, he disagreed with you. Okay, 
What, what do you think, Darcy? It's the, it's the woman's fault. Yeah. Are you are you convinced yet? Because I'm starting <laughs> to come around here to David's way of thinking. <laughs> My take, because you know we're all on the edge of our seats with his take. How many people <laughs> like this? Nobody. He didn't get any likes. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. There's some hope in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My take is certain to offend modern sensibilities. So he's already knowing, he's prefacing this with, you know, everyone's about to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Biblical instruction is quite simple. He's not asking her to sin in wanting another child. He's asking her to continue to carry out God's instructions to be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't think there's a lot of discussion here. I think it speaks for itself, but I'm sitting here just like, you know, oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. Anytime somebody uses that, like, I don't know why it irks me. Like, I feel like we're not in that time anymore where we're necessarily, where that's our command. Yeah. Um, but that might just be an entirely different discussion and that might open a can of worms here. Yeah. But like, I don't know, we're pretty populated like, there's definitely a call for us to continue to keep having kids. But, like, if you're just wanting to continue the population, then I think it's each couple needs to have, like, two and a half kids. Right. And so it's like, they already have, like, two. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, a half. like, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, the and a half is like one family has two, one has three. Mm. Okay. That's where the half comes in. Gotcha. So, like, they're, they're technically already meeting the requirements yeah. of population. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at it from like the scientific side of things and so, and even biblically, if like that's the call, like we, we are no longer in a point where we can sustain having eight, 10 children family Yeah. and, and everybody doing it that way. Like if every Christian did that, like we would overpopulate the earth, but then like <laughs> not very long. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last part of David's comment. Thank you, David, for your wisdom. Or at least his first comment. Yeah. I'm going to think. Man, oh, I'm, I'm already, I'm reading that second comment. I'm yeah. already upset. Yeah. All right, lastly, David says, if he wants a third child and she won't go along with him, she's in the wrong here and she's withholding part of God's blessing upon his family. <laughs> well, David, she, she even divorced. like, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Um, castrate yourself, please. Yeah, please. You're um, an idiot. <laughs> so like, she even said, she didn't even say like, she doesn't want a right. third kid. Just she right just said right second, now. She's overwhelmed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's like, still kid, you know, babies. She didn't say like she's done and trying to get her tubes tied. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, yeah. and if she was like, there's still not a problem with being done now. Yeah. Um, but she wasn't even saying that either. She's yeah. saying not right now. Right. And so like even his argument right here of withholding, like, no, she's not because she's open to the idea. She just has her hands full. Okay, so you did read his second comment, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. The whole thing, didn't you? Yeah. <sighs> All right, back to his other thing. I didn't address the condom aspect. If she used to submit to him to all things per Ephesians and First Peter, then how is submitting to his desire for prophylacticless sex any different than submitting to his desire for a larger family? Okay, can you understand that part? So he's saying... If she's submitting to the condom, then why why does she have a problem submitting to a larger family? Is that what he's saying? I I don't know. Because <laughs> he it sounds like he's having trouble. Well, he did type condom. I was like, is he uncomfortable saying condom? He has to give the full Webster <laughs> definition. You know what I mean? Full scientific terminology. The issue would be in his approach to it all. He does not need to be secretive about how he goes about what he just what he decides. Okay. Doesn't matter what she wants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever he decides. Yeah. You know. It's not a problem that he did that. It was a yeah. problem that he was secretive about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Is is the problem <laughs> apparently? He should be confident and assured enough to be upfront about what he needs and wants. I like how having a kid is his need. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he like I'm not saying this guy whoever he is. We don't know the whole thing even. Right. Going off a nun's version of it, but. I don't know. They were so happy before he messed up like this. And, like, may, I don't know if he's an absent dad or maybe he does come home and give her a break. But well, it seems like he's a really decent man to consider that they've been together six years and there's never been a night to, like, cold shoulder each other. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. Like, everything's been worked out. Yeah. She's a reasonable woman from what we can see. Yeah. 
Um, it seems like this was just kind of like a really massive F up on his part. Right. Where he that just, like really hurt her and, and he didn't yeah. think it would. Right. In his mind, he's in the moment. He's like, oh, let yeah. me just take the glove off right. real quick, you know? And, right. And then to her, she's like, oh my gosh, you just brought back the 20 years ago trauma, yeah. you know? You know, so like, I, I, I don't think this is like some horrible dude. Yeah. You know, Not I like the last episode <laughs> <laughs> where <laughs> the dude's clearly married to five other people. <laughs> Um, you know, like it, it seems, yeah, you know, if this is the first time she's really having a big, big problem, yeah, I, you know, they probably have a really good, happy marriage. She's yeah. said multiple times she loves having sex with her husband, you know, so this isn't like a reoccurring thing where he's like bringing up this trauma, you know. So his last part of his comment, he's like, what she would benefit from is an older woman who could teach her how to love her husband. Yeah. That really irks me. Yeah. Per Titus 2. <laughs> yeah. What is it? This, David, you're so dumb. I'm sorry. I don't know. He looks happy in his picture. He looks happy, happily married. His wife looks very submissive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, Anand. Sounds like you, uh, you're in quite a pickle. What's our policy on pickles, Darcy? As, as long as you're in the pickle and the pickle's not in you, it's, it's all right. Words of wisdom. As long as the pickle's not in you. That's fine. Pickle was in her, though. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is she in the pickle, <laughs> she also got the pickle in her. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> well, Darcy, as we were scrolling through, you saw another oh, one. God. Do you think we can get this done in about 24 minutes? <sighs> yeah, let me find it. All right, so upon my search for this last post to find the actual post rather than the screenshot... I typed in the keyword of like the essayed R word that she used mm -hmm. to try to find it. Um, Here it is in all caps. <laughs> and oh my gosh. So, just as a, I guess we should give another preface with this one. We literally only read the first sentence. Yeah. Um, neither one of us has read this whole thing. So, we have no idea where this is about to go. Yeah. The first um, part, though, seemed like good quality entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! I apologize if you're easily offended, audience. You know, I don't know how many people are going to listen, but let's do it. I'm. It will speak for itself. Yep. When I, and he'll read the first part that we read, and then we can walk through this new journey together <laughs> on whatever else is about to come up. So right. I'm reading this one. What was <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to use this sound effect to make it sound better, uh, to make it sound like someone's testifying. Let's see how this works. If this sounds dumb, we won't I do it again. I think it will be funny. All right, here we go. <clears throat> My husband cheated on me. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Not to be finished, okay? This is a very sensitive topic. My voice has been disguised. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take you seriously. You're not supposed to. This is a funny bit. <laughs> You're um, loud. I know. It doesn't taste for well in this. All right, it's enough of that. <laughs> All right, Rex normal. That was hilarious. My husband cheated on me, and we have separated. It's been four months now, and I'm still so heartbroken. He has destroyed me and our family. Now he's dating someone else. In parentheses, not the one he cheated with. Said he was miserable for years, which I had no idea. I just know how... I just don't know how to get past all this hurt and life changes. Now I have to do every second weekend without my daughter, which kills me. And I didn't want this life, but it's out of my control. I need advice on how to deal with all of this and be able to get a better place mentally and emotionally. Okay. All right, this is a classic here. Wait, break it down before you start reading the comments. Well, I, don't, I mean, it's easier. I, I feel like I have to break it down less because I read it myself. Do you, do you I like it? when you break it down. Well, excuse me. Got to do what the woman <laughs> likes, too. <laughs> but All if right. you go biblically, it's That's only true. what the man wants. That's true. Biblically. According to <laughs> Ephesians, Titus, and... <laughs> First you know, Peter 3. Yeah, Psalms. Yeah. Psalms 157, verse 5. Anyway. Okay. Husband cheated on me. We have separated. It's been four months. So, my last breakup... Breakup, breakup. Not the couple girls I've talked to in between. I didn't get over till two years after the fact. So the fact that it's a husband who cheated, they're separated, it's four months, he's with somebody else. I cannot imagine the grief that she's going through. What about you? Can you picture anything similar? 
I mean, I can only speculate at this point because, like, just the breakup I've been through that took me years to get over. Right. Because I keep in mind. Well, they that, even have kids. Right. I, yeah, that's true. That that's makes it even, even harder. Worse. There's so many people that don't leave their significant other because, like, of their kids. Yeah. So, just me. It sounds like he left her, though. Yeah, right. For another person. Mm-hmm. But it's it's tough. I can only speculate, like I said, because I'm sitting here. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I'm sitting here thinking about it. And just that, that little relationship I had, I was so head over heels for this girl. I thought we were going to get married. She said we we're going to get married. And then over the course of like a couple hours, she's gone. And she's not just gone. She blocks me. I can never talk to her again. I got to see her at church. And it's a really tough thing to do. You know, husband actually cheats on you. And they're, now you're separated. Mm-hmm. It's four months. You're still, like, she's still heartbroken. That doesn't surprise me. Because right. like I said, it took me two years to get over this It sounded this like girl. it was like an actual like relationship between him and this other person too. Yeah. From, I For, mean, unless I'm like jumping to conclusions here. But it sounds like it wasn't like a one time, like he slipped up and slept with somebody. Like it sounds like he was in relationship with someone else. Well, yeah. For, now, can you break down why that's women care more about that than guys do, supposedly? Um. Because okay, let me let me let me preface that yeah. with why I'm asking. So, for guys, when a girl cheats on them, it's more so like okay, it, they're they're more concerned with the physical stuff. Mm. It's less emotional. Not I, for me, I would say it's actually more emotional because I was raised by my mom. I wasn't raised by a macho man. I'd say for a good portion of my childhood, I didn't have a father up until I was like 16. So I ra- being raised by my mom, if I was cheated on, for me, it would be an emotional thing. Mm-hmm. But for most guys, it's just a physical thing. For women, when their husband cheats on them, it's, it's less about, well, was she hot? It's more so, do you love her? Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Now, can you shed light, Darcy, on why that would be? For a woman. So, cheating all the way around is god-awful. I mean, (laughs) you heard on my last episode, I was like, you could be a serial killer and I'll, you know, I'll help you hide out in my attic, but if you uh, had sex with one of them, you know, like, I'm ratting you out. (laughs) And I mean mean this in a loving way, because you're my best friend, but you have been cheated on. (laughs) Right. right? But you have also been the one to cheat. So you got... you got Semi. You have a perspective on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I say that bringing it up because she's not like that now. She doesn't have those tendencies. So I'm not throwing her under the bus. Right. We're just to discussing our past, you yeah. know, cause like all, I can openly admit my mistakes in relationships in the past. I I'm willing to say I'm very insecure. Uh, a lot of the petty fights that are started between me and whoever I'm dating are my fault. You know what I'm saying? And that stuff I'm working on. I have my flaws and I've made mistakes. I'm no Darcy at some point in her life has made mistakes. Uh, decisions that she probably wouldn't make again so I don't say that to bring up any negative feelings I say it to say like you've been on both sides of the spectrum right. so so anyway. if someone I, I think that when it's a moment that gets which there's a lot of steps to cheating you yeah. know even if it's a one time hookup there was still a lot of steps to it but um when it's a one time whoops a daisy, I slipped up, I feel bad, this and that, you know, like they feel guilty, what have you, they're sorry, yeah. they won't do it again type of thing. That's something that can be worked on. Right. But when you're having like a full other relationship, the only reason you're gonna feel bad about it is because you got caught. Um, mm. and that's not something you can really work through after that, at yeah. least not for most people. I mean, maybe, I, maybe some people do it, I guess, but like, um, to have like a relationship, like that's right. just such a like, oh my God. Well, you know? yeah. And it's not just relationship. It's a full marriage. Yeah. She's had kids with this person. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. Um, cause whenever my boyfriend cheated on me, he was dating somebody else for three months of the nine months we were together. Um, And I remember when I first found out, he painted as a picture as it just happened one time with this one girl. It was the night that things got carried out of hand. And I decided, like, I would work through it with them. Mm -hmm. And then after he passed away was when I found out that they were actually in a relationship for, like, three months. Yeah. Because after he died, she was like, yeah, he was my boyfriend the last three months. And I was like, huh? (laughs) But 
if he was still, if he was still alive to cut his motorcycle brakes oh for sure <laughs> yeah for sure right so. um but yeah it's a different type of betrayal and then um the time i cheated i was dating this guy and i was trying to force myself to like him he because a, he was a turd he wasn't a good yeah, guy no not all not that cheating's okay but right. this guy was a turd yeah and you know, once it happened, you realized, okay, I got to break up with this dude because mm-hmm. this is wrong. Well, I remember being interested in this person, and it really was kind of like a sudden thing. Like, he, it was my 21st birthday. COVID had all the bars shut down. He was like, hey, I have extra drinks at my house. I wasn't thinking anything about it. I was just like, okay, cool. Like, we've never, we've gone out before, and nothing yeah. was ever weird. So I was like, yeah, I didn't even think that he had any type of interest in me. Mm. And I didn't think I had any interest in him either. So we were drinking, and he ended up trying to kiss me. And I was like, no, I can't. I can't. I have a boyfriend, da, da, da. And he was like, dude, you don't even like your boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone <God. knows>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Does everyone see this? Yeah. And so he had kissed me, and he was going to take things further. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, yeah. I really can't. I have a boyfriend. I'm yeah. not a cheater. I don't do this. I'm going to break up with him, and I'll, I'll come back on a different day. Mm-hmm. And the different next day. morning, I called my boyfriend at the time, broke up with him. I wasn't up front said like, oh, I kissed another man last night. And that's what made me realize I really didn't like you. (laughs) But like I was very purposeful to stop things. Like we didn't have sex. We didn't like go, you know, like I was like, no, like this really isn't okay. Yeah. So like, you know, it was still bad. People have done way worse though. Like, yeah, yeah, it's been pretty bad. So here's the part that gets me. And this kind of ties in with like, you know, this isn't something that kind of happened out of nowhere. Right. But he says now he's dating someone else, not the one he cheated with. So he cheated on his wife, mm-hmm. and now he's dating four months late. It's only four months after. Yeah. So it's like, did you? If I were her, okay, it's another anon account, another anon participant. So I'm sitting here thinking, like, if someone's cheating on me, and then they're just moving on so fast with other women four months after we're separated, yeah. it starts putting those thoughts in your head. Did you ever? even care right did you ever even love me yeah you know what i mean because like my last girlfriend and she's not talking about like he said he was sorry right. he begged for nope. her back nope. he okay. wants to keep trying no, he'll right change here. like there's no like oh, type of well no there's stuff here it says it said he was miserable for years which i had no idea so he's actually going the opposite direction yeah. he's not saying i'm sorry let's try again he's right. saying i never liked you to begin with so at yeah. least he's i mean at the very least he's being up front <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um it's more than I've gotten, I think, in my <laughs> right. dating life. You know, I keep getting the runarounds. But, okay, so my last girlfriend, I, I can emphasize with that. My last girlfriend sent me, broke up with me on Christmas over text saying, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm sorry, I said I love you for, like, all, just all these things, like, just not making sense. I'm not ready to date. And I found out the very next day. She's talking to this other guy from our church, like, and then making the same promises to him. Mm. She doesn't bring me up, doesn't bring up the fact that, oh, I just broke up with somebody. Like, I'm not, she's just going on about her business. So it gets me thinking, did you ever even really care? Yeah. Did you ever even really, because, you know, it took years for me to get over her. I wasn't ready to date. I wasn't ready to hop Mm. back on the online dating. I needed that time to heal. And I needed every day of that two years, you know. Uh, the, The girl I was talking to last, like, whenever we ended things. I needed a month to myself to get my head right, you know? Um, again, it wasn't anything serious. I, I wasn't emotionally connected to that. But I still recognize that I needed time to heal. So when someone moves on that fast to, like, he's with somebody else and not even the one he cheated on me with, like, it's... Right. You know, it puts those thoughts. Did he even care? Yeah. You know? So, said he was miserable for years, which I had no idea. He probably wasn't communicating. He probably mm-hmm. wasn't, you know, he never wanted to try counseling he never wanted to do all these things you know uh i just don't know how to get past all this hurt and life changes and we're talking life changes was married now they're separated has to drop the kids off at his place Mm -hmm. i have to do every second weekend without my daughter which kills me and i didn't want this life but it's out of my control there's some good self-reflection there it is out of your control i'm Mm -hmm. very proud of you for staying with that because that's that's one of the hardest things to admit yeah okay you're definitely not a control freak if you're acknowledging it's out of my control Mm -hmm. i love that for you anon thank you i need advice on how to deal with all of this be able to get to a better place mentally and emotionally i like that she's not being hard on herself no no 
and just it's not, stating facts. There's a lot of very rational women on this, on this Facebook yeah. group. I'm not used to this level yeah. of rationality with women. And is that a sexist it's, remark? Probably. But <laughs> I'm just being real. It's kind of nice to see. It's, it's nice to see like some like really like level headed thought through women. Yeah. Speaking about problems without being like psychotic or blowing things out of the portion or feeling guilty themselves, you know, like yep. sitting there and allowing themselves to be a victim. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's really easy to do. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud of you, Anand. Yeah. You, you're really laying it out. I very impressive. I empathize with you because it, one, I can't imagine, but I can, I can only speculate. I can only sit here and try to extend empathy because I've never been in your position. I've kind of been like in the ballpark the betrayal. I understand the betrayal. Um, I understand the aspect of like when he moves on so fast after yeah. he was committed to you for life. You know, I, the, the, you said the vows. You did. You know, you had a kid, and now your your life is just upside down. Mm. He wants nothing to do with you. He was never happy. He's with another woman. Yeah, more than one. And it's like, I'm sorry. I really wish I could. I wish there was a magic thing I could say to how to cope. How would you tell her how to cope? She's asking for advice here. If we, if we ever got big and like some big listeners and they're going through some tough stuff, what would you say to them? A woman that's going through this right now. I think it's a great time to learn how to love yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I remember after I got out of, and not necessarily that he was hitting her or blah, 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 but if he's been unhappy for a really long time, then she has had a form of not like abuse, but just like not being like well treated mm -hmm. and not cared for the way yeah. she should. And I think this is a beautiful time to like be able to self reflect and find what you want, what you love, what makes you happy without having to worry about this other person yeah. that is unhappy no matter what you do. I remember after my boyfriend had passed away, I was, I was very distraught. And one of the hardest things was like, I knew nothing about myself. Mm. You know, it was like the, the music I liked. Anytime I heard a song, I was like, well, would he like this song? And that's what made me like it was if I thought he would. Yeah. You know, like there was just all these things I try to do and like and mm. force myself to be in my personality that wasn't so that I could make him happy and he would be happy with me. And yeah. it was such a beautiful time for me to discover like this is the music I like. This is what I get enjoyment out of. This is my personality. I I hate talking about, you know, this stupid car, you know. I, I never liked talking about that with him, but I forced myself to. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's a really beautiful time to have some self-reflection for who you are apart from what a man is putting into you. I agree. So I would not encourage you, Anon, to go out and just grab another guy. Right. And that was a wonderful time to be single. Exactly. So Lots of healing to that, happen. That every other weekend, it's not a lot of time, those weekends go by quick, mm. especially now that you're probably working to support you and your daughter. Yeah. Okay. That could be a blessing in disguise, though. Yeah. Hopefully yep. he's paying child support, but if not, if you're busting your butt trying to get, but you get every other weekend off, mm. I encourage you to go grab your friends. Yeah. If you don't have, you, <clears throat> if you don't have any friends, go make some friends. Take have a the bath, best shave your legs, yeah. you it. know, like. Get very pretty. Yeah. All up. Yeah. Do the thing. Even Do if you're not going you. out anywhere, make mm -hmm. yourself pretty and go sit at a bar. Let a person buy you some drinks. That's have right. a good time. Enjoy singleness. Yes. Enjoy being able to be flirty and have mm -hmm. fun and look good good yep. and not have to worry about what anyone else thinks of you go out by yourself and allow people to admire you yep again I fun. i've not been in your exact shoes but i've mm -hmm. been in the ballpark and what made me feel better was i called my friends that were unrelated to this girl and her friend group and my friend group like that the common friends we had i took a little bit of time away from them and i hit up some old friends that i had seen less and I told them the situation. They took me out on a date night, and it was tough, but they knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And we just had the best time. We went yeah. we went at, to the golfing driving range. We went out for food. It, it's yeah. a tough order to ask them to take me with them on a date, you know. Um, but yeah. they did it. Learn how to enjoy being by yourself. Yeah. And, or, like, or fall in love with you. There you go. But if you can't be by yourself, go grab your friends. Go make some friends. Yeah. Or like Darcy said, go sit somewhere where people are going to approach you and be, you know, be pursued for a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you got to learn how to love yourself. And I'm not going to lie to you and say 
it's gonna take away all the pain because it's not it took me years to get over the last girl yeah. This is this was your husband. This was the guy you said your vows to. You said you were going to be married to forever. And here's the other thing too. He's always going to be the father of your child. Yeah. It, that you can't change that. It sucks. It, it right here. You even put in here. Um, I have to do every second weekend without my daughter, which kills me. But you know the the hard fact is that it's going to be like that until she turns eighteen. You know, and even after she turns eighteen, he's still going to be the father of your kid. There's always going to be that hurt. Mm. There's always going to be that little sense of bitterness in the back of your mind. Okay, that you you can't change that. And that, especially since this is a Christian group, pray for him. Yeah. If, e- even if yeah. it kills you, there are people that have really, really done me wrong. Mm-hmm. And some of the biggest freedoms I have found is in forgiveness and praying for him, even if I don't feel like it. Yeah. And now my my prayers are genuine. I want those people to find Christ. That's I want those people to yeah. be forgiven. I don't want them to, to suffer. And forgiveness isn't for the other person. Yeah. It's for you because yeah. you're not, I mean, you're never going to be at peace. You're always going to have those things if you're going to hold on to the bitterness. So, all right, you ready for the comments? Because this is, this is going to be pretty rough, guys. <laughs> all right. It's quite unfortunate you went through all this. Your husband cheated is not enough reason for separation. There is no sin that is unpardonable. (laughs) Try and forgive him and empty your heart of the past so that a strange woman won't take total control and dominion over your home. And as much as you love your daughter, fight and win your man back. (laughs) Finally, invite Jesus Christ into your marriage because he ordered marriage, and without him, marriages end in crisis. You know what, Mr. MacDonald? You're right. (laughs) <laughs> Throw out everything I just said. <laughs> Anon, you are in the wrong. <laughs> there is no sin justifiable for separation. My God, what was I thinking? Yeah, even though the Bible <laughs> itself says that, you know... <laughs> Um, unfaithfulness is grounds for a divorce. Like, just throw that out. Yeah, you know, that that's out. Okay. yeah, <laughs> way off. Okay, that was probably a mistranslation. <laughs> it's your fault. Okay, it says right here, forgive him, empty your heart of the past, so that a strange woman won't take control and dominion. You know, it's her. It's your fault. A strange woman came in and took over your husband. <laughs> oh yeah, and your home. <laughs> um, how would you even? Okay, even if this was like solid advice, how would you go out and fight and win your man back? In right. This if he doesn't want to be with you, if he's unhappy, like yeah. he's, it, it sounds like he left her. Yeah. So like, what is she supposed to do mm-hmm. here? Yeah. Like, even if the uh, like, if you have someone that's telling you no. Yeah. You know, like I don't <laughs> want you. I don't like you. I've been unhappy. I, you know, you caught me cheating, and I don't even care to ask for forgiveness or to get help. How do you go about that? Yeah. Like, you don't. Right. I mean, imagine if I chased after the last girl I just described to you. Like, yeah. what a waste of time that would be. I promise right. you, it would have been, it would take longer than two years for me to get over her. Right. So. And even, I like, biblically, it, it is grounds for a divorce. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if, if you want to go hardcore and not even take any type of, like... Um, Darcy, you need to invite Jesus into your marriage. Yeah, apparently... And not just Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Not Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Have, have you seen that one TikTok where it's like, Hey, S.A., did you know Jesus loves you? <laughs> and he goes, he does... Hey, Sus, is that true? <laughs> Do you love me? And he goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really old school one. I might have showed it to you where the guys like uh, the, the family, they're praying. Thank you, Jesus. For Please don't food. cancel me for my Hispanic <laughs> accent. I'm sorry if yeah, that was that's offensive. Terrible. Yeah. Jack, you, you know, forget Jack Black's performance in <laughs> yeah. Nacho Libre. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but there's that old meme where the family they're like praying thank you jesus for this food and they cut to the guy cutting down food in the field <laughs> <De nada. laughs> yeah okay that was a little sidetracked but That's a sidebar. that was it's funny fine. yeah this this has been a dark episode so we'll be okay all right in instances like this says christian oh a little bit of irony here in instances like this people don't randomly cheat you must have shut him out so bad that not even you being noticed no, I'm sorry. That not even you noticed his needs were not being met. Don't justify doesn't justify the cheat, but it seems you may have not have been a part of this marriage. Anon, you're in the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it is your fault. <laughs> the fact that you didn't notice yeah. is why he cheated. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You should have known how miserable he was. <laughs> it doesn't matter he didn't communicate. Right. It didn't it doesn't matter he was hiding stuff. It doesn't matter yeah. he hops woman to woman. Yeah. You didn't notice. It is your fault, Anon. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Oh, gosh. <laughs> these people. There's no way this is like... Uh, like, these people actually exist that think this way. 
I know. Someone gave him a laugh emoji for that. <laughs> <laughs> Michael says, women also sometimes don't listen when the man is telling them exactly what they need. Okay, that's true. Like a third child? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She should have listened. I, maybe, maybe she should have listened to her husband taking the condom off. Yeah. She should have been very aware yeah. of like, wait, that doesn't sound like you're wearing protection. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yep. Bernadette says women's love lies. That's hilarious. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's true, Michael. Sometimes women don't listen. I've been in those situations where the woman's not listening. Right. This is not that situation. Yeah. Michael, it sounds like you don't date enough because yes, you're right. There are some women that don't listen to what, when you're trying to communicate, they're not listening to a word you say. That That's not this instance. It sounds she's like seen, she, with how well put together her post yeah. was, I get you could make yourself look okay for right. a single post. I, I get that that I've doesn't necessarily, yeah. <laughs> I get that this doesn't necessarily make her a well thought out level headed woman. Right. But cons- <laughs> going off of what we have to go off of, yeah. which is a well put together, well thought out, really level headed post, mm-hmm. like, there, no. Yeah, husband's <laughs> in the wrong. He has a pattern. It, yeah. It, unless she's lying, he has a pattern of hopping woman to woman. Four months in, he's at least that we know about been through two women. Yeah. I guarantee you, he was cheating well before she caught him. Yeah. He was probably cheating more than once. Yeah. Pr- different women. So, Michael, I appreciate your comment, but unfortunately, you're an idiot. Yeah. So, all right. I think we're out of time for today, Darcy. How do you feel? I. We got to cover some good posts. Yep. Sorry for the dark episode, but this is, you know, the third wheel at night. Yeah. So, you know, we cover mature subjects. Dark. Here. Dark. Like I like my coffee. Mm, nothing else. Not my men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, before we go off on another um, political rant, we will see you next time. Say bye, Darcy. See you guys. Bye.